Hey everybody, welcome to Airsoftology Mondays, the show that answers your questions, helps you out in a pinch, and also tells you that the airsoft hangover is a very real thing. I'm your host, Jonathan Higgs, and welcome back. First, let me get this out of the way. I wanna say thank you so much for letting me have a week off last week. I know you guys are like, ah, where'd Mondays go? And I went to a, an event this weekend. I went to Operation Ironclad, uh, American Mill Sims Operation Ironclad in Hattiesburg, Mississippi, and I met a bunch of you awesome guys out there, the viewers, you guys freaking rock, and you're all like, hey, where's Mondays? Fear not, I just really needed that weekend off to get caught up on reviews. In fact, I got 11 reviews shot that I've had in the queue, like written out, been doing all the testing. So it gave me a chance to get caught up on those. Thank you so much. And if you guys are listening, I don't know if you can tell, my voice is a little on the lower side because I'm shot because I did just get back late last night, pulled in about 11 p.m. And now it's early in the morning, had to take the wife to the airport uh, super early this morning to fly out on work. And uh, I'm here doing the video. I am spent. I am so cooked, so tired. I had so much fun this weekend playing uh, out there at uh, that, like, was it the, uh, what's it called? Oh man, I forget, Camp, um, Camp Shelby, there you go. Boy, see the brains that I've been firing on all four cylinders today. But yeah, that game was awesome. I mean, seriously, 50 foot fireball. I'm dead serious, the night game. That, that is the sum up of the event. 50 foot fireball from an air raid explosion. Uh, if you guys haven't gone to one and you're old enough to pull it off, it's a definite must do. Also I wanna give a big shout out to a buddy of mine, Finn. Uh, I don't know if you can see behind me, right here and uh, this patch, I think I'm kind of looking at the screen up here, trying to make sure that patch right there. Buddy of mine uh, from Denmark, a uh, long, long, long time uh, listener and viewer of the show. Actually, he goes way back to the podcast days. Used to send a lot of questions back then. So uh, thank you, awesome. Thank you so much for the team patches. Uh, and I know I heard you guys a few weeks ago ask if you want me to do a, a P.O. Box. I am getting one set up. I'll have it probably for next week's show. I'll announce it. So just stay tuned on the P.O. Box thing. Um, as for updates, we are gonna be kicking off gameplay. And I wanna let you guys know there's gonna be a little bit of programming change on the channel, but if you're not, Mondays to stay in on Monday, obviously, because it's Mondays. And then we're gonna do Wednesday's reviews, and I may mix in a few more reviews. I've got quite a few to catch up on, so it might be like a, a Wednesday, Thursday, or Tuesday, Wednesday kind of thing. But once we get settled in, it's gonna be Monday's Q&A show, Wednesday review, and Friday's going to be a gameplay. So every single week, you're gonna be able to come to the channel and check out gameplay on Friday. I know I've been holding back Copperhead for a long time, but I wanted to have enough videos in the queue so I could start and then be able to put this Ironclad out. And then I've got Operation Irene, and after that, I've Faded Giant. That's gonna cap out the Milsom events for 2015, as well as some other events and gameplay throughout at local fields and regional fields as I travel around the country, uh, hopefully in your backyard. I'll keep the announcements here for those. So if you guys will be visiting your fields, I'll let you know here ahead of time so you guys can come out. I'd love to play with you guys. But uh, enough of the updates, enough of all the that and uh, the old scratchy uh, Airsoft hangover voice. Let's jump into what you're really here for, and that is your questions. Jackson Paul writes, Hey Jonathan, I love the show and I was wondering, what is your favorite season to play events in? Me being from Ohio, I personally like the fall the most. Hey, I'm with you on the fall. By the way, it's a really rare profile pic you have there, if you know what I mean. But uh, yeah, it's the fall time. I'm in Tennessee. I, I know a lot of you guys know I live there, but if you didn't know, I live in Nashville, Tennessee. And the fall is just awesome here. Summers can be a bit on the old oppressive side and springtime, while great, I have like nuclear allergies. I think Nashville's like one of those cities. I know if you kind of live in the South or kind of in the Midwest, there are pockets of cities that are just like atomic bomb allergy cities. And this is one of them for sure. So like in the springtime, I have to be like highly medicated to go outside. I'm usually like, you know, high as a kite on Benadryl or something like that. So when it comes down to it, the fall is my absolute favorite time to play. And if you guys can tell, I'm Morty. Got the hoodie out today is like perfect. It's like 52 degrees this morning. It's gonna get to like the high 70s. It is freaking awesome. But yeah, I, I know it's still late summer. I think we only got like a couple weeks left till fall. But yeah, that is my favorite time. I do enjoy winter play though. Even when it gets cold, I think uh, just you know, gearing up by the time you throw a plate carrier on, you know, you can throw a soft shell over something. Or if you're really running hard on a super cold day, a you know, fleece, I recommend not overburdening yourself on a cold day though, because you can still sweat. And if you sweat plus super cold, it gets a little chilly. But yeah, coming down to it, I'd say fall first, then winter second, then followed by, then spring, and then probably summer's my least favorite just because it's just so oppressively freaking hot. It can really just sap the energy right out of you. Dominic Batty writes, Hey Jonathan, I was wondering with high caps, is it safe to pour water on it to clean out dirt and other things? 
So I definitely say no go on the water. I mean, I wouldn't put it in there. There are some metal parts like the spring and some other things inside of a high cap and getting all that water out would be very difficult uh, without having to like heat it up, but there's also plastic parts. So no on that, but I am going to show you a quick tip on this. I've got a high cap. I've had this one forever. Most of them are going to have a, like a screw here holding the plate on. So this is your traditional standard design high cap. It usually takes an Allen screw. I think it's like a two and a half or a three or something like that. And you're just going to want to take that Allen screw out out. So by doing that, you kind of uh, basically the internal guts, the plastic part that we're going to be pulling out here in a second. The only thing that really holds it in place is that. And then a couple little clips here on the side. I don't know if you can kind of see the little notches. They're kind of like right there and there's one on either side. So then you're going to give it a pull. Now you may have to push in on those notches because those are also uh, how it holds in place. You may want to give them a little pressure to pull it. Then you can pull the guts out. So You've got the metal shell. Now, if you want to wash this, have at it. You can uh, actually slide the bottom plate off now if you want to because that screws out. It's uh, held in place by a little tab here, so you kind of have to lift up on this uh, lip and then pull it out. And then you can actually do your cleaning on this part. Like I said, this one's pretty darn old and it's probably due up for a little cleaning. You also can maybe, if you uh, have some issues in here, some of the gears, you may be able to throw a little bit of silicone oil. Be very sparingly with it though. Use it like just slightly because you don't want to get on the BBs. You get silicone on BBs and then you try to run it through your hop up and you're going to have a problem. But that's how you take apart a high cap. I mean, it's pretty darn simple uh, to get to it. And if you want to go hardcore, you can disassemble this. But keep in mind, there's a big lead, like a uh, coiled spring in here that uh, you could have an issue with getting it even back together. So you can have a big problem doing that. But from a cleaning standpoint, this should work just fine. I would probably use something like, oh, I got some like this stuff, like canned air, get in here, blow it out, knock any dust, debris out of there, and uh, you should be good to go by doing that, and you should be able to revive an old high cap that's kind of full of gunk. I speak Airsoft writes, Dear John, why is American Mill Sim never doing anything on the East Coast, like Pennsylvania, New York, or Connecticut? I thought it was American Mill Sim. I don't know what it is, uh, and it's not just them. I mean, I love the American Mill Sim guys. I love John Liu. I, lo I love all the, the big promoters, Mill Sim West. Uh, they... Uh, there's like a vacuum of Milsim events in the Northeast. I'm not sure if it's the colder winters and uh, or such, or, and then usually the summers you're usually using things in the South because I guess things open up for other ops. I, I really don't know. I'd love to see some games up there. I know there have been some in the past, like in the New Jersey area, like Scranton. I know John Liu is probably one of the biggest uh, event promoters that's wandered up into that area with, um, oh, what was it called? Like Red Storm, I think, Red Storm East is what it was up there. I know there's some in Virginia, but that's still pretty far south if you live up in the Pennsylvania, New York area, and Connecticut area. But I don't know why you don't go any farther up there. I think Connecticut, Vermont, New Hampshire, I mean, you could wander into those uh, and have some great places to play, Massachusetts. So, I mean, there's a lot of stuff in the far northeast that, I mean, there's abandoned factories, really cool places. I would love to go do some airsoft in. So yeah, I don't know, maybe uh, hit up the guys, because I know all the American Muslim guys personally, maybe hit them up and uh, see if I can put a bug in their ear to do something up your direction. Tom Root asks, hey Jonathan, I have an old Tokyo Marie AUG A1 from my cousin. I just turned 13 and I'm trying to get into airsoft along with a few friends. It's been sitting on a shelf for at least over a year since he went to college and I want to know what I need to do to get it up and running. I have all I need otherwise, mags, new batteries, smart charger, etc. Okay, so sitting on the shelf for a while is probably not going to do too much to your airsoft gun in a negative way. Uh, what I would look at, you may have some oxidization issues on some of the electrical contacts. Being a Marui, probably not. I mean, Marui use pretty good materials in their build. So I'd check the contacts on the battery connector, make sure it's not kind of white and cloudy. If it is, you can always clean it off with an electronics cleaner, a little alcohol, something like that. Uh, use like high percentage rubbing alcohol and a Q-tip and get down in those things. Just to give you better contacts. Because sometimes the things sit, they oxidize, uh, especially the metal they use in those plugs. Um, one other thing you may want to look at is the bucking. Uh, if it's rubber bucking, obviously it sits around for a year. It could be a little dry, brittle, dry rotted. I would maybe get that out. Good thing is since it's an AUG, it's super simple. You get that little switch about halfway at the body. You can take the whole upper assembly off and you can take that uh, little twist and a, a pull out and you can get that whole barrel assembly out. So I definitely check that. Also, you don't know what condition. I mean, I'm sure he took great care of his stuff, but make sure, uh, give it a good look over. Make sure the fuse looks good. You don't have any issues there. Oxidization around the fuse itself and that's just in the, the back of the gun. You Obviously, you can see it when you change the battery out. Uh, and then of course, like I said, that bucking, you may have to invest in it, but a bucking, you know, you can get for anywhere between like $6. And if you want to go super high end, like 20 ish, 
for like uh, the really fancy dancy ones. Most of my pick up are around seven or, or 10 bucks. You can get some great ones out there. But yeah, that's probably all you're gonna need. Maybe clean the barrel too. Uh, if you put it away after you used it, the barrel might need some cleaning. And when you change out that bucking, it might be a great time to uh, get the old cleaning rod out and run it down a few times and uh, make it nice and sparkly and new. Delta Airsoft writes, if I wanna travel with my Airsoft guns and I have an HPA tank, how do I do that? Do I put it in my gun case? You can travel with it. I probably wouldn't put it in your gun case. You may want to put like in a check bag. I guess you could put it in your gun case, but there is a big deal. And I'm going to show you, this is my Ninja tank here. It's a monster 62, 3000 PSI metal tank of, of doom. Uh, they will not let you travel in the air with this with compressed air in it. Period. It will be seized by TSA, guaranteed. It'll be gone, you will lose it. Uh, TSA gets a lot of paintball tanks uh, every single year in airsoft tanks like this now uh, by people trying to travel with them. What you're going to need to do is get every drop of air out of this tank and just you know drain it so you have to shoot it, you know, open up your reg, whatever, and then you have to remove the regulator. And I'm not talking about, I'm looking around for my other reg, I can't find the hose. Oh, here it is. We're not talking about removing this regulator, right? Not this part. We're talking about removing the tank reg, which is this portion right here in the tank, this top portion. So once all the air is out, that's so important because I mean, you can cause some serious problems if the air's not out. You're gonna need to unscrew this portion. It threads down the center of your tank. It's like about yeah, big around, it threads all the way down. So you're gonna need to undo your entire reg. Once you get it off, it's a long thread, so you have to unscrew it for a while. And there's tons of videos online on how to do it. So just like type in how to remove my tank regulator, uh, paintball tank regulator, something like that. Um, air out, 100% air out. I'm talking so gone that you can press a little ball bearing here down the top with your finger and nothing happens. Take the reg off, put it separately. That way you can show the TSA that, hey, tank is empty. Put on a note, hey guys, regular's empty. Please check to see. You can see down in the tank it's empty. Then you have a really darn good chance of flying with that. If you don't, and even the reg is on, they don't even know, you can pretty much kiss your tank goodbye if you're doing air travel. Well guys, that's it for questions this week, which means it's time for the Code Red Headsets video recommendation of the week. And since we were talking airsoft events and Milsom events and things like that, uh, I wanted to kind of bring up something from almost a year ago now. A uh, great video from a buddy of mine, Robo Murray. If you guys don't subscribe to his channel, definitely check him out. It's uh, Robo Airsoft or Robo Murray. I have a link to his channel in the description below. And I'll, of course, as well as this video. And this is from a direct action mission from American Milsim. If you guys aren't familiar uh, with American Milsim, they have the event and then you can pay a little extra to run as a squad or get just put up with the squad. If you wanna do it as an individual, you kinda of get teamed up to run these direct action missions, which are your guys, like one squad versus a dedicated opposing force that's scripted, you have objectives. So think of it like, honest to goodness, like really playing a video game against opponents. When you shoot them, they'll scream out and they'll die in place. They may have intel on them. You may have hostages you have to rescue. It's everything you really, really want to have in an awesome airsoft game, but really can't do it when it's force versus force because I mean usually it's just team deathmatch right so in this case it is so fun I pretty much do a direct action mission every time I go to American Milsim game they are the pinnacle I love them I missed Fate of Giant last year but I wanted to show you guys this because I just got back and I got to run two direct action missions this time I ran a night mission and a daytime mission I'm gonna have a video of that up I'll be my first video from uh, Operation Ironclad after we finish up the Copperhead series but yeah Robo had a blast this one looked nuts. They're assaulting this multi-story uh, factory facility and there's smoke and guys hiding in the rafters. It looked like a ton of fun. I'm still kicking myself I missed it, but I am going this year. But yeah, definitely check it out. And if you guys haven't subbed to Robo, give him the old sub button. Again, I'll have a link to his channel and this video in the description below. All right, guys, that's it for this episode. It's over so quick, I know. And it just, it was great. I Again, thank you so much for letting me kind of sneak out on last week. It'll be my first skip of the year and probably my only skip of this year. I think you'll see maybe a skip sometime early mid next year. I try to maybe take like two Mondays off in a year, you know. Other than that, I try to stay on track and get you guys those Mondays every 
single week. Um, again, if you want to get your question in the show, it's super simple. Put it in the comment section below. Vote up your favorites and don't be discouraged if you don't get yours on. I can only get so many on in a show, you know, like five or six or so. Uh, so if you don't see it and you don't get answered, just keep putting it in the next week video, the fresh video, because that's the one I really go to to pull questions from. Uh, so put it in the next week and let's just like some of I had on this one, we'll get it on the next show. Now, uh, until I get out of here, I'm going to go nurse some airsoft hangover with some honey tea because like I get my voice back and uh, my sore muscles, <laughs> so I could take some Advil or something like that. But until then, go out, play some airsoft, have some fun, but no matter what you do, call your freaking hits.